let's talk about the sport of swimming. Everyone loves a good Netflix documentary. Some of my recent favorites are the ones that give a behind the scenes look at some less mainstream sports such as golf, tennis, or F1. The one thing that all these sports have in common though is that they're very high class, individual based, elite sports. Typically, these documentaries cover sports that have underlying racial issues. From Tiger Woods in golf to Lewis Hamilton breaking barriers in F1, all these sports have an elitism that doesn't rub everyone the same way. Swimming isn't an exception to the rule either, with only 1.5% of USA Swimming's registered members being African American. However, all these sports have adapted and grown for the better, garnering international audiences and gaining attention, except for swimming. Swimming hasn't figured out a way to break into the mainstream media, despite being the number one most watched sport at the Olympics. I decided to take it upon myself to do a deep dive analysis and figure out what the problems are with the sport of swimming and how they can be fixed to make swimming more popular and more mainstream. I didn't just rely on myself though. I spoke with many swimmers, got lots of input, critiques, and ideas for the sport of swimming. And I think I might have just found the solution. But in order to understand, we need to take a step back and look at how swimming got here. For many years, life after college swimming for many aspiring swimmers who wanted to swim professionally just wasn't viable except for top swimmers. From small sponsorships that required too much of the swimmer to having to compete each weekend just to earn enough prize money to make a comfortable living, the pull just wasn't there for professional swimming. Due to this, the sport of swimming really never became mainstream and there was no pro swimming on TV or in the news. However, in 2017, one Russian-Ukrainian billionaire decided that this needed to change and founded the International Swim League, or ISL for short. Well, who is this mystery man? None other than Konstantin Grigorishin, who has an estimated net worth of over $2 billion. And in 2019, the ISL hosted their first meet, and professional swimming finally became a viable option. The ISL has gathered the world's top swimmers, brought in DJs to make the meets more fun, and created new events to make swimming more enjoyable to the masses. But in October of 2021, nearing the end of the ISL's third season, athletes started actually boycotting, claiming that they hadn't been paid the high amount of prize money that they were promised by the ISL. Additionally, heading into ISL's fourth season, lots of questions were asked about the viability of the league, as no major media sports outlet had picked up the swimming league and viewership remained low. The nail in the coffin for the ISL came in March of 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine and the founders of ISL were forced to shift their focus outside of swimming. Due to this, the team and the funding back in ISL had dried up and the ISL was no more. While swimming hasn't made it to the ESPNs of the world yet, when the bright lights are on every four years at the Olympics, millions tune in to watch swimming. But why during the Olympics and not any other time? Well, it simply comes down to the team aspect that the sport of swimming and many other individual sports are lacking. In the Olympics, you root for your own country and there's a lot of pride when someone wins a gold medal. But after the games are over, people don't tune into swimming like they do for other individual sports like a golf or a tennis. I think one big reason for this is the lack of marketing and the lack of hype around the sport of swimming. In golf and in tennis, you have world rankings. Athletes are always trying to climb the world rankings ladder and every competition matters in order for athletes to keep their spot on the totem pole. However, in swimming, athletes don't have a metric to chase each week. Due to this, swimmers don't really care about performing unless it's the world championships, NCAAs, or the Olympic Games. But the Olympics is not to blame for swimming's lack of popularity. Let's dive deeper into three reasons why swimming has failed to carry the spotlight past the games. Swimming is an individual sport. How can we make it more team focused? The NCAA has done a great job of creating a team title to go along with the individual merits of swimmers competing for their school. The ISL tried to do this with their eight team format and having it be an America versus Europe kind of thing. On top of that, they also tried to do a localization of teams, giving fans in certain regions teams to cheer for. Without the ISL though, swimming is back to where it used to be. Even with the ISL, fans didn't really bond together towards a team. I feel like they need to start marketing it better and creating some more rivalries amongst teams. Which brings me to my next point. Swimmers need to have more of a personality. The sport of swimming is very friendly. And due to this, there's no beef, no drama, and leaving the fans nothing to cheer for. In a day and age of social media and clicks, Fans need a reason to tune in to a sport like swimming. Athletes in other sports such as baseball, football, or basketball 
have created rivalries amongst their teams and other individuals. And they bring a lot of emotion to the sport when they win. When's the last time you saw a swimmer celebrate? Like truly celebrate. It's just not common. Athletes need to be trained to give fans a better storyline, whether it's through social media, meets that they attend, or through other channels. But as it stands right now, there's really no personality in the sport of swimming. Everyone's just kind of friendly to one another. Even sports like golf, where it's supposed to be super classy, have major rivalries. Swimming has got to fix this. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Lastly, swimming needs to create a high quality packaged event that brings out spectators from the masses, similar to how other high class sports like golf or tennis have done. If you go to a swimming, usually you're a parent and usually you're rooting for kids from your team, your son or daughter, or anybody that you know personally. Those spectators are viewing the sport on a very micro level. So thinking about the individual themselves and their performances and their skills respectively. If we're able to take it and create a more team focused viewer experience, I think that that is how we can shift swimming from being this kind of like niche sport to being a little bit more mainstream, opening up the door for the general population to really get invested in the sport. One thing I would do to make make swimming more mainstream. We need to have it broadcasted more, specifically ESPN alongside with the basketball and the football. At our two biggest meets, we had a t-shirt cannon. We had our live mascot, Bebo, at the front door. There was a live DJ, there were strobe lights, there were graphics on the screen that were from football games. On both sides, both teams, we just had an incredible amount of fun. And I think that is something that organizations could change to make swim meets a little bit more engaging and fewer friendly. Unlike some of these other sports that Netflix decide to make documentaries about, swimming also lacks another thing, and that's the gambling side of sports. With online sports betting becoming more and more popular, fans are tuning into new sports and learning about its rich history just because they stand to make a profit off of it. Without the possibility of gambling in the sport of swimming, I don't foresee it attracting many new viewers like many of these other high-class sports have managed to do. Now that you know all the problems, let's pivot to the potential solutions for the sport of swimming. So by now, you might be wondering, well, how did Netflix fail swimming then? Where do they fit into all of this? Well, one major thing that I think would revitalize the sport of swimming is a Netflix documentary. Think about the Drive to Survive series and what it did for F1 on an international level. I mean, it brought F1 to America, a whole new market that wasn't even paying attention until Netflix did something. However, before Netflix can swoop in and save the day, swimming needs to address the three problems that I previously mentioned that are holding back the sport. Once that is done, here are the things that I believe would ensure that this Netflix documentary doesn't go in vain and why viewers should tune in. Netflix should do a season by season documentary, similar to how they've done with Drive to Survive, that follows athletes around the world to their training pools and gets an inside scoop on what their life is like as a professional swimming athlete. For this documentary to actually have some content though, swimmers would have to allow unprecedented access to their lives and show their true colors. I know that all swimmers are competitive and have big goals. They just need to show it. Whether it be on social media, a celebration in the pool after winning a race, or a rivalry outside the pool, this Netflix documentary would cover it all. And I think it would truly tell the story of swimming that so many don't know. I know that a documentary style film that follows the likes of Caleb Dressel, Katie Ledecky, Ryan Murphy, throughout the years leading up to the Olympics, with all the ups and downs of the sport of swimming, would be massively popular and successful. There are good sides and bad sides to the sport of swimming. We just need someone to tell the story. Whenever someone asks me what sport I play, I'm always proud to tell them I am a swimmer. I am a swimmer. I am a swimmer. I am a swimmer. But I just wish they were a little bit more excited when I gave them that answer. The sport of swimming has a long way to come to even make professional swimming viable for a large amount of athletes. In a Netflix documentary that revealed the inside lives of the top swimmers in the world, I think it'd be a great springboard into getting swimming into a much larger mainstream audience. It's not the end all be all fix. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lots of problems that we need to address first, but it's a start. What would you do to fix the sport of swimming and make it more mainstream. Would you tune in to a Netflix documentary on swimming with your friends and family? Let me know down below in the comments. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel for more great swimming content. And with that, I'll see you all next week.